Lesh Nihon Syndrome. You're five years old sitting on the floor with your favorite toy car. Cartoons play in the background, but something feels off. Your hand jerks suddenly, not because you chose to move it. You didn't move your hand. It moved by itself. It bites. It scratches. And you just sit there, confused. You try to stop, but your body ignores you. At first, your parents think it's frustration, or maybe just a phase, but deep down, it doesn't feel like a tantrum. It feels like being trapped inside yourself. Eventually, after doctor visits and long silences, a name arrives. Lesh Nyhan Syndrome. A missing enzyme disrupts your chemistry, lets uric acid pile up like static in a broken machine. Your joints swell, movements misfire, and the more you try to control it, the more it slips through your fingers. People think you're acting out, that you're violent or wild, but they don't see the truth. They don't see how hard you're trying. Stoneman Syndrome, FOP. You fall and scrape your knee. A bandage, maybe a tear or two, and you move on. That's how it should go, but this time, something's different. The bruise hardens, not into a scab, but into something stiff, something wrong. Days pass and it doesn't fade, it spreads. First your thigh stiffens, then your hip, and finally your back. Your parents call it growing pains, but bones aren't supposed to grow inside your muscles. Eventually doctors say the words, Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, F-O-P. A rare condition where even the smallest injury can trigger new bone to form in the wrong places. A fall can cost you your elbow. A simple injection can freeze your jaw. Bit by bit, your body becomes a cage of its own making. You stop running, then walking. Eventually, you learn to be still, not by choice but by survival. Myostatin-related hypertrophy. You've never lifted weights, never followed a workout plan, but by the time you're a toddler, your muscles are already defined, like someone sculpted you out of stone. It's not steroids, not superhuman effort. It's a rare mutation like a disruption in the myostatin gene, the very thing that tells your body to stop building muscle. Without it, your muscles grow bigger, faster, and stronger. Naturally, doctors are fascinated. You run faster, jump higher, recover quicker. Your body is an efficiency machine with strength that shouldn't exist at your age. But strength has layers. What looks like a blessing on the outside can bring challenges you never asked for. Extra muscle means extra weight which can strain your joints as you age. And it's not just physical. People expect you to be invincible, to perform, to be extraordinary. Hypertrichosis. It begins with a few fine hairs, barely noticeable. You glance in the mirror one morning and wonder, is it just the lighting? Maybe it's nothing. But over time, it spreads. Forehead, cheeks, neck, back, thick, dark strand growing faster than you can shave, conceal, or explain. At school, people stop calling you by your name. Instead, they label you the wolf the beast. Eventually, doctors diagnose it as hypertrichosis, a rare medical condition that causes excessive hair growth. There is no known cure, no treatment to stop it, just stares, whispers, and the gradual change in how others perceive you. But the hardest part isn't the hair itself. It's watching your reflection slowly disappear, as if your face is being erased one strand at a time. DAC2 mutation, no sleep needed. You sleep just a few hours a night, not because you're an insomniac, but because that's all your body seems to need. You're wide awake at 3 a.m., scrolling through the quiet. The world is asleep, but your mind is lit up like a city skyline. No foggy mornings, no groggy afternoons, just endless clarity. At first, it feels like a superpower. You get more done. You read more, work more, think more. While others dream, you build. But it's not just about productivity. It's a genetic anomaly. Doctors call it a DEC2 mutation, a rare shift in your internal clock. Your brain completes sleep cycles faster than most, especially deep REM sleep. You don't need eight hours. You barely need five. And yet, you function at full capacity. There's no treatment, because there's nothing to fix. Most people with this mutation live healthy, balanced lives, but fewer than 1% of the population carry it. Methemoglobinemia, blue skin. You catch it one morning in the mirror, a faint blue around your lips. At first you think it's the lighting, but it's not. Over time, the color deepens. Not just your lips, your fingertips, your nose, even the whites of your eyes begin to carry that bluish hue. You feel fine, no pain, no dizziness, just blue. People assume it's lack of oxygen, some even panic. But the real cause lies in your blood. Methemoglobinemia, a condition where your hemoglobin can't carry oxygen the way it should. The iron in your blood gets oxidized, turning your skin into a shade that doesn't quite belong. It's rare, sometimes inherited, sometimes triggered by medications or chemicals. 
In mild cases, you live normally with just an unusual appearance. In severe cases, it can cause fatigue, shortness of breath, or in extreme situations, even be life-threatening. But for you, it's mostly social. The looks, the questions, the whispering curiosity. LRP5 mutation. As a kid, you never break a bone. Not when you fall off your bike. Not when you crash into a wall. Not even when you tumble down a flight of stairs. At first, it seems like a gift. They call you superhuman. But the truth is heavier, literally. A rare mutation in your LRP5 gene makes your bones two to three times denser than normal. They don't snap, they absorb. Your skeleton is like concrete, but strength like this comes with trade-offs. Swimming? Nearly impossible. Your bones pull you down, like anchors. MRIs can't read you, your body resists the machines. And while breaks don't scare you, stiffness and joint pain become a daily routine. People admire your strength, they just don't see the struggle of carrying it. Tetrachromacy. You're staring at a painting in a gallery and you can't figure out why no one else is amazed. They call it blue. You see shades of sapphire, steel, storm, and midnight all bleeding into one another like a private spectrum. Only you can access. You notice mismatched fabrics, uneven lighting, subtle shadows that others walk past without a glance. Eventually, you learn it has a name, tetrachromacy, a rare genetic trait where your eyes carry four types of color receptors instead of the usual three. Where others see one hue, you see dozens. Your world is sharper, richer, and louder. But there's a catch. More color doesn't always mean more beauty. Sometimes your vision feels like static. Too much information, too many shades, too much all at once. You wish you could turn it down, just for a moment. But your eyes were never designed for quiet. Citus inverses, flipped organs. Imagine going for a routine checkup, and the doctor freezes staring at your x-ray. Your heart? It's beating on the right side of your chest. Your liver, on the left. Your entire internal layout, reversed. It's called situs inversus, a rare condition where your major organs are flipped like a mirror image. Most people with it never even know because everything works just fine. You breathe, digest, live like anyone else. No pain, no symptoms, just a body that runs on a reversed blueprint. But the real challenge doesn't come from the condition itself. It comes when doctors don't know you have it. Appendicitis might go unnoticed because the pain is on the wrong side. X-rays or scans can confuse specialists who are not expecting the flip. Even CPR can be done on the wrong side. Some people only discover they have situs inversus during surgeries or medical emergencies. It's not life-threatening on its own, but misunderstanding it can be. Trimethylaminuria, fish odor syndrome. You shower twice a day. You scrub, you spray, but still the smell follows you. Like a shadow you can't outrun. It's not hygiene, it's chemistry. Your body can't break down trimethylamine, a compound found in foods like eggs, fish, and some vegetables. Instead of processing it, your system lets it leak out through your sweat, your breath, and even your urine. The result? A strong, fishy odor that shows up without warning. It's called trimethylaminuria, a rare metabolic disorder that turns your body into a scent factory. And no matter how clean you are, people assume otherwise. You become hyper-aware in public. Every hook, every elevator ride, every classroom feels like a test you didn't study for. It is not painful, it is not deadly, but it is isolating in a way few things are. You start avoiding social events, talking less, laughing less, because you don't want to be remembered for something you can't control. You are not dirty. You are just living with a body that speaks louder than you do. Insensitivity to pain. You fall hard on the pavement. You get injured, but you do not cry. Not because you are brave, but because you did not feel it. It's not numbness, it is absence. Your body does not register pain at all. It is called congenital insensitivity to pain, a rare genetic condition where the nerves that carry pain signals just don't work. As a child, it feels like a superpower. No more scraped knees, no more tears after falling off a bike. But then you burn your hand on the stove and do not pull away. You break a bone and keep walking on it because the danger is not the injury, it's not knowing you are hurt. People with CIP often suffer severe wounds, joint damage, or infections. Simply because their body doesn't send warnings, there is no alarm system. Just silence, even when things go wrong. Doctors monitor them constantly. Parents become full-time body inspectors, checking for swelling, bruising, and broken skin. EEC syndrome. You are born with hands that do not quite look like everyone else's. Fingers fused together or maybe missing altogether. Feet shaped differently. Eyes that blink through dryness and light sensitivity. It is called EEC syndrome, a rare genetic condition that alters how your skin, limbs, teeth, and nails develop. 
It does not just touch one part of you, it touches everything. Children with EEC often need multiple surgeries in their early life. Many also experience chronic dry eyes due to underdeveloped tear ducts, making blinking painful or blurry vision common. Dental problems are frequent too. It is not a one-time diagnosis. It is a lifetime of monitoring, managing, and adapting. And while there is no cure, early interventions help many lead full, capable lives with the right support.